as you know, we do this on a weekly basis. This is what we call our Better 52 uh, weekly webinar series. And this is a commitment for us uh, to you, the loan officer, uh, 52 weeks to getting better. This is something that was really triggered by a question of, you know, what would it take and what would you suggest, Renee, to to just really get better on a weekly basis in my business. And this was a commitment that I made to really start re-exploring what I believe, my content, and what we believe here at Better Loan Officers, and, and share it here with you on a weekly basis. And this week, we're going to be talking about competitive strategy, and specifically around differentiation strategy. But uh, we're going to go into a brief overview of, of why we're here, how we got here, and what Better Loan Officers is. And I founded Better Loan Officers back in 2013 with the um, vision of being a review management software solely focused on the mortgage industry and where you can search, find, and review any licensed loan originator in the country and give them tools to leverage and improve their reputation. Currently, we're proud to say that we are the largest directory of loan officers with over 500,000 profiles. And it was the, the research behind it is really this reality that 70% of people that you do business with consult reviews or ratings before you do business. And we learned last year that that number is actually now 85%. That was the 70 was back in 2008. As we know that the reality of, of reviews and your online reputation is growing on a daily basis. And so we want to make sure that we're, we're staying on top of that. So again, go to your Better Loan Officers page, enter your NMLS ID after you've clicked on the four loan officers button, and that will take you to your profile where you can claim your unclaimed profile if you've not done so and um, follow the instructions. It's pretty simple. Uh, a lot of great tools, which I'll talk about more towards the end uh, around the pro sheet, things that really actually are pertinent to what today's topic is about. So our vision, again, is to be the voice and currency of trust, and we want our mission to, to be to give you the tools to be more trustworthy and to help you convey more trust and professionals with, professionalism with your referral partners and clients. One of my favorite visuals that we start with is we all know this direction that we're headed and we set a goal, but oftentimes there's all these little elements that maybe don't come into place. And so here at at Better Loan Officers, we want to help you set that goal, but also align all of those little pieces that help put everything into play. And that's what the Better 52 is really about. We've talked about the six money-making activities, so I like to just kind of put those back into play uh, every time we talk. This is, this is if you haven't been on the first session of what, uh, our first session on, on fundamentals of selling, please go back, or professional selling, please go back and listen to that because this whole process is really coming together over these 52 weeks. And so remember this slide. This is more of just memory because I know a lot of you have been here before and do that. So this week, week 10, differentiation strategies. This is this is a fun one because I don't, I don't get a chance to talk about this too often. This is something that affected me years ago and something that I got involved with years ago. And it is something that became who I am, part of how I think, what I, what I do. And it is something that isn't as... Um, Prevalent, I, and sadly, it's just not as prevalent as it is as it should be in the mortgage industry. And so, this is uh, fun. I'm going to be able to talk about this here today. So, uh, this quote is something that it really is, is the backdrop. And I ask people all the time to to define what does differentiation mean to them. And I always get this concept of you know what's to stand out. And well, I said if, if it was to stand out, you could wear a clown suit and you'd stand out. But would you get any more business? And at the end of the day. This is the best definition I've heard because it has withstood every question uh, that I've ever faced. And it's to differentiate is to persuade people to consume or purchase your product or service without having to lower its price. Think about that for a minute. Most people will say they, they have a differentiation strategy while at the same time they're lowering price, giving concessions. Take an honest look at this. And this is you'll hear this from me all the time is to take a really hard, honest look at your business. And if you have had to lower your price or give a concession of some sort, you have not fully differentiated and there's still more that you can do. Now, I'm not saying that you never do that, but this is one of those questions that, you know, if you can think about it from this perspective, it will only make you better. Reality, though, has to be faced. In our system, BetterLoanOfficers.com, we have over 500,000 NMLS ID profiles. Over 500,000. And of those, we are assuming around 300 to 350,000 of those are producing loan officers. That means you are in a crowded space. I mean, you are in a highly, highly crowded space. And you need to think about this competitive environment and face the reality that you are in competition. You are in a competitive environment, highly competitive environment. 
And unfortunately, most people are competing based on price. Well, unfortunately, but I say fortunately for you, and hopefully at the end of this, these four weeks, for this topic, you'll, you'll get as excited as I do when people start lowering price. So as I do with everything, I like to begin back and, and take a, an, a really strong educational look at this and, and um, look at what we're talking about when, when we mean by competition. And at the end, please, if you've got questions, write them down, raise your hand. I've got uh, one person that's raising his hand, I think, here. Uh, are people not seeing the slides? They should be able to see the slides. Yeah, they should be able to. All right. But uh, if you have questions, please raise your hand. Ask those questions at the end. We're going to open it up and, and, and have that discussion. That's where it becomes powerful. But let's define competition. In economics, competition is the rivalry. Think about that, the rivalry. We always think about where's the rivalry in sports and everything else, but in business and economics, it's the same thing. It's a rivalry among sellers trying to achieve such goals as increasing profits, market share, and sales volume. Hopefully this sounds familiar in terms of what you're trying to do as well. By varying elements, the elements of marketing, the marketing mix, price, product, distribution, and promotion. So that's a definition you'd get straight out of a textbook. And, and those aren't real exciting, um, but, but the reason and for all of those words is very real. Whether you decide to face the reality of this definition or not, I can't, I can't decide that for you. But you have to turn, stop, and face and say, what does that mean? Who are my rivals? What's going on? How am I competing to try to increase my profit, market share, and sales volume? What does price, product, distribution, and promotion mean to me? All those questions are things that you need to answer. And so I always like to ask, are you ready to compete? Are you fully prepared? Is your business prepared? Is your mindset there to compete? Because if you played a sport, you had to get yourself mentally ready every single day. You had to practice, put in the hours, the sweat, lift the weights. Are you doing that right now for your business? If it, you just get up every day and you go to business and hopefully business comes in and you hand it over to somebody and it gets done and you're, you're doing okay. And that's the challenge with, with mortgage. It's, it's easy to do okay, not trying real hard. But are you doing the best that you can and are you really truly looking at this from a competitive environment? And if you're on this call, you're already ahead of the game because you obviously think from that perspective of training. This is like going to the weight room. Middle of the day, we're going to give you a short workout. I'm going to start shortening these, these sessions up too because I think an hour – Every week uh, tends to be a big commitment. So I want to get to the point on these fast and give you short snippets with some homework at the end of each one of these. So the reality is if you're not ready to compete, your competition has already begun. They're competing. They're thinking about ways to beat you, to take your clients. They're thinking about when you go on vacation, how do they take a referral partner? How do they outperform you, outpresent you, outclose you, outservice you? They're thinking along those lines. And you also need to be thinking along this way of how do I compete and so that's the next question. If you're asking, okay, so what does this mean, compete? I'm, okay, if, if I don't lower my price, does it just mean outworking people? Maybe. That might be a really good way. In fact, I know a lot of people that are outworking their competition. They, they're, just, they're in earlier. They stay longer. They make more phone calls, and they just do better. And so when, when you think about that, that, how do I compete, it's a big question. And if you're doing well, you're obviously doing well, but... There's always ways that can get better, and hopefully this, this uh, session today will start triggering some ideas. So I want to back up, though, and, and take a look at the, the, the king of competition, Michael Porter, one of my idols. I read his book, books back uh, when I was in college. They were handed to me by an investment banker that said, if you don't read these books, you probably can never really compete or survive in business. And Michael Porter has been named uh, by, by Fortune Magazine probably the most famous and influential professor who has ever lived, business professor who's ever lived. He wrote the book called Competitive Strategy. He was the guy that came up with the term competitive advantage, and we all, something we all use. It was this guy, and he's still alive, sitting there at Harvard. Uh, it's one of my bucket lists to go and actually meet, meet this guy and actually sit down with him. But competitive strategy, all of those things, now we're going to get into, even today, a f a, even deeper than competitive strategy. We're looking at um, something that would be uh, a sustainable competitive advantage. So again, Michael Porter. And what he said is really there are, there are only three ways that we can compete. And those three ways are lowest price. And Walmart's kind of figured that one out. It's going out there and say, how can we have the lowest price? And Walmart's nailed that one. And then there's also focus. Uh, think about all the different ways that you could change or fix someone's car. Valvoline has said, we're going to do it one way. We're only going to change your oil. And then there's differentiation. It's the third way that you can compete. 
And that's, I like the example of Rainforest Cafe. And why do I like that? Well, I'm in Minnesota and we, when the, the Mall of America first opened up, we had this Rainforest Cafe there. Definitely not there anymore. And, but if you've ever been there, if you've ever done this, you know, it's the tourist trap. The food isn't very good. In fact, it's, it's not good at all. There's always a wait, hour to two hour wait to get in there. And when the, the food is super expensive and you end up buying T-shirts and sweatshirts and mugs and all of this stuff. And so they clearly haven't, competed on price because they're more expensive they haven't competed on focus because they, they offer everything under the sun they haven't even decided to compete on quality their, de- their decision was differentiation through experience and it was usually something that the kids would drive the parents to something that the parents could go and say you know what we're, we, we're, we're tired at least the kids can be entertained and that was their way of differentiation and so I'm not saying become a rainforest cafe but this is sort of a look and I like taking a look at the marketplace and and how it is that we do that. So let's take another look at um, the concept of positioning. Okay, This is something that I always find, found was fascinating. And where do you position yourself in the marketplace? By how you decide to compete is important. And so taking a look at things that we use on a daily basis and their strategy is always, I think, has been very valuable. So let's take a look at this from a positioning matrix here. Like, so companies can choose tartar, like let's say toothpaste, for example, tartar control and white, whiter teeth marketing to families. That would be Crest. That's kind of the, the, what they did. And, I, and I'm using this from when I was younger too. This is something that we all grew up with. You know, a lot of these brands would actually change. In fact, back in the day, there was, I think these, these brands only had one or two brands out there. And, and I think uh, some of these brands have upwards of 72 different brands. It's, it's, it's wild. But Aquafresh chose the, the position of, we're going to be fun, three different colors, and we're going to go after children, right? This was something that back in the day, Aquafresh had, a, had a, just, a, a, cor- a, just a, a, a grip on that marketplace. And now there's, there's a whole section on just kids' toothpaste. And close up, if you remember those those commercials, two very attractive people making out, you know, rolling around in the in the, uh, in the grass, they decided to be sexy and to go after adults and especially single adults, and so um, very different. But these were choices of how they decided to position their brand and how they decided to compete in the marketplace. And you know, the more you take a look at this, and and I, again, I stress this to all my clients: is not just be a student of what's happening and what you're learning, but be a student of your experience. There's so much that we can learn when we just stop and pay attention to how we are being sold, pay attention to how we feel when we're being sold, when we're being pushed away, when we we feel like we're not being sold. Pay attention to that stuff. And so in the grocery store, pay attention to what, what's, what's happening. How are these people competing? And we're going to end with this question, of course, turning all these questions back onto ourselves and how it is that we're competing. When I owned a mortgage company uh, back, it was a co-owner of a mortgage company back in 2002, I think it was. We used to use this uh, buy referral only, I think, gave us this. We were big fans of buy referral only. In fact, at the time, our, our mortgage company was referral mortgage. It was uh, legal at the time to be called a referral mortgage. I don't think it would be illegal anymore. But we would use this piece as part of our presentation, our client presentation, and as our part of our realtor presentation. And it was simple. Probably something you've seen before, but we executed this thing every single time. And before we would talk about price, before we would talk about anything, we would have this conversation <clears throat> around what how we compete and where we see ourselves. And whenever you get a mortgage, this is how we would present it. There's, there's the process in which you get a mortgage, and there's also the product that you buy. And what you'll find sometimes is that the process was below satisfaction, and maybe you were even dissatisfied with the product. You'll probably never use that service again. But then sometimes the process meets your expectations, and maybe it was, you were satisfied with it. You'll be a one-time customer, and we love the example of Applebee's. You know, there's nothing like, you never say, why, well, just this huge celebration, I just, you know, Got a huge promotion. Let's all go to Applebee's. That's probably not what you, you, you hear. This is that place that meets your expectations and you're satisfied with it. So maybe you'll go there. My, for some reason, my two boys love going there. So I, I am forced every once in a while to go there. I try not to. But then there's a process that exceeds your expectation. And you're absolutely delighted with a product. And that's where we create, create this concept of a raving fan advocate. And that's what our choice, that's what we want to do. So this is a way to take, present, take differentiation and make it explicit. I always tell people is not only choose your strategy and be clear about it, but also make it explicit. Talk to your clients, talk to your referral partners, your realtors. Tell them over and over and over and over what you're doing to be different. Tell your team members why you are different. Remind them at every meeting, are they doing these types of things that, that fit your brand? Because when you're presenting something, you're, you're, your brand is a promise. You're saying, we promise to be this way. And then you have all sorts of people that work for you that are your promise keepers. Are they keeping your brand promise? So these are questions to 
to ask. And, and this is a very simple tool. And, and um, well, Brian, we can probably make this visual available for people that, that don't have it. Uh, we can make it uh, available for those. We'll, we'll probably just send out an email or, or if you send some, some, something out for us. But we would probably ask that you at least claim your, your profile with uh, Better Loan Officers to do that. So um, next piece. I've seen lots of companies. They compete with this word world-class service. Now, I did this search, if you can even look at the screenshot, because I like to keep it. Look at the old Windows version at the bottom here, how long ago this was, okay? And I did just a search of world-class service in Google. This was when Google is still pretty new. And what do you see up here? 394 million responses. 394 million. And so part of the challenge with differentiation is, is, is your difference actually any different? And has world-class service been overused? Yes. Does it mean you cannot use it? Absolutely not. You totally can use it. Absolutely you can use service. The question and what will make it different is how well you deliver on that service. How well you deliver on that service. And so you have to move beyond just talking about it into actually being able to deliver it, deliver upon it, and being able to convince people that that's how you, what you do. And so when we had this, we actually used this in our, in our presentation. And we used it and we said, look, everybody's saying this, but let me tell you and let me show you what we mean by that. And everything that followed uh, fulfilled the promise of how we ran our operations, how we did things, how we communicated, the 88 touch points and how we, what we did. All of that fulfilled the promise. And now world-class service meant something to them. And so what I say is be careful what you use. But if you use something that is cliche or if you use something that is overused, make sure you qualify that show and tell the story behind it. And I think that goes back into even the, the framing effect uh, that we talked about in our last month's piece. If you didn't go, and if you didn't get a chance to listen to those, go back to our, our uh, site and look at some of the past webinars. And it's because all of these things are tying back together each time we do this. They, they do build upon each other. So make sure you do go back and, and get that. So can you use it? Yes, you can. But make sure that you know how to tell the story better than somebody else. So we talked about competitive advantage, but I, and please forgive the ugliness of the slide because I, I, I stay true to where, where I got it from and, and I was going to recreate it, but I really do want to give credit to, to where it came from. But what we're talking about competitive advantage is that way of standing out from your competition. But the reality is what we're looking for is a sustainable competitive advantage. That's something that's not replicable, that lasts and stands the test of time. Lowering your price is not sustainable. Technology isn't even sustainable because somebody can write a check to do it. How you market is not sustainable because somebody can write a check and copy you. So you have to ask yourself, what's my competitive advantage and is it sustainable? So here's, here's a great view of, of distinctive capabilities, usually uh, not replicatable or replicable by competitors. There's tangible ones and there's intangible ones. And you see the tangible ones are intellectual property rights, exclusive licenses, and statutory monopolies. Guess what? There isn't a single one of us here that can probably claim any of these as something we can compete with. Sadly. There aren't, they just, there aren't many of these left. Now, there are intangible ones. Things like a strong brand, strong leadership, Fantastic knowledge and skills, things that you do better than others. I know people that focus on like 203K loans. I know one person um, in Florida that focuses on the mortgage credit certificate, and he's killing it. I know that doesn't work in every market, but he found something that works for him, and that helps him stand out. I know another individual that focuses on doctor loans and, and doctor loan programs, the one that focuses on, on financial advisors, and they kill it. Things like teamwork, organizational culture, business processes, partnerships. All of those pieces are definitely sustainable. But the question is, do you have them and can you tell the story? Because I know a lot of companies that have this stuff, but they, are, they don't know how to tell the story. They don't know how to get people to actually uh, see and believe um, this. And so I, I got a question from, from Bob. It says, it's, he's, you're not seeing the uh, title screen. We have hit play. Uh, I, th I think everybody else can see the slide, so I think that might be something on your end, Bob. I apologize about that. We can, uh, you'll be able to see it in the in the recording for sure, and uh, uh, so I'm not sure exactly what to do about that. So um, maybe there's sometimes different screens that show this, but we did definitely have hit play. Maybe try logging out, logging back in, and hopefully that'll work for you. So going back, um, sustainable competitive advantage. Those things are pieces that um, 
in, this is also good to understand, reproducible. These are the ones that are replicable. Technical capabilities, financial capabilities, marketing capabilities, uh, knowledge, non-exclusive licenses. These are things that people can go out and get. So I want you to start thinking not only about what's my competitive advantage, but what is my sustainable competitive advantage. All right. So now, a lot about theory, a lot of concepts. So I want to I want to do some case studies here, and I want to show you some examples of what have been done out there in the world, and then I want to tie it back to what can we do here. So we're going to pretend that we we are starting four different companies. Okay, we're going to compete in four different marketplaces, and these four marketplaces are. Uh, very highly saturated. They're very, very. Uh, I mean, I'm, they're, they're, I'm talking about the competition is so high. They've got uh, brands that are taking the majority of the market share, but we're going to see if we can't compete in these marketplaces. And so uh, we're going to think about it from these terms of, for differentiation. But first, we're going to start an ice cream brand. Think about how many ice cream brands there are out there. And so our strategy is going to be very, very different. And I want to see if you can guess what it is. We're going to open up posh ice cream parlor shops. And we're going to get featured in the menus of high-end restaurants. That's going to be our strategy. So can you guess? From a take, give you for a second. What brand did we just start? Think about it. Posh ice cream parlors and featured on the menus of high-end restaurants. If you guessed it right, you did. We just started haagen Very considered different. Now, I think they've also even merged into um, being that choice when uh, you want just one serving, even though that's serving is uh, you know thousand plus calories. They've got a very very unique way of of doing this, and they charge more, but the experience also goes with it. There's something that goes along with Hagenas. Just tastes better, and maybe you don't agree, but I think a good majority of people do agree. So let's start another company. Here we're going to start a chocolate company. Think of how many chocolate brands there are out there. Why in the world would we compete? Our approach though is going to be we're going to build a theme park. Yeah, we're going to attract kids. We're going to uh, brand ourselves as being fun. And we're going to do one more thing, and this will probably give it away for you. We're going to focus on one specific product. Well, just one. We're going to focus on a chocolate egg, specifically around a certain time of year. And, yep, you guessed it, that'd be Cadbury. Now, I'm definitely not a fan of that egg, but a lot of people are. And it's definitely unique. And I think a lot of people buy it just because it's an egg. And it's uh, uh, around Easter. I'm actually, I should probably do the research. I'd love to see what their actual sales are just around Easter and how much that affects the entire company production. So, third company. We are going to start a skin and body care retailer. Lots of brands out there. Oh, my gosh. Everybody's got their own uh, lotion and potion out there. But we're going to do this very differently. We're going to support environmental and social causes. So, think for a minute. Who might this be? Who supports environmental and social causes? And yep, you guessed it. That's the body shop. The original ethical and natural beauty brand where they're against animal testing, supporting community fair trade, activating self-esteem, defending human rights, and protecting the planet. That is what they stand upon. That is their differentiation. That's how they like to look at it. And again, my favorite one, though, this last one here, is we're going to start a circus, and you probably can already guess this one. But here's what's fascinating about this study, about how this particular group did this. They decided to compete by doing several different pieces, things. One is they said, we're going to eliminate star performers. Eliminate star performers. We're going to um, eliminate animals, and we're going to eliminate aisle concession sales, and we're going to make it way more expensive and hold it in a parking lot. Who is this? Obviously, Cirque du Soleil. So now, think about it. Ringling Brothers or Shrine Circus, you've got free tickets in one hand, and you've got hundreds plus dollar tickets in the, in the other hand. Where do you go? Most of us go to Cirque du Soleil because of the experience. So think about that. This uh, case study was highlighted in a great book called Blue Ocean Strategy. And Blue Ocean Strategy is, is I think, probably the second best and probably even more, probably more of my favorite, uh, even though it's still pretty uh, technical. A uh, very exciting book because it talks about a blue ocean as compared to a red ocean. And a red ocean is a very highly, imagine a lot of boats out there and they're slashing prices and slitting each other's throats with cost and so there's so much blood in the water through competition that's the red ocean but a blue ocean is an uncontested market space it's somewhere where nobody decided to play no one's out there doing it and it's blue opportunity is endless and so the way that they did that is they have a process where they answer four questions and we're going to go through that next week specifically those four questions and how do that how does that apply to my business 
is how do we eliminate? What are things we need to eliminate? What are things that we need to create? What are things that we need to reduce? And what are things that we need to increase? Those four questions and those four quadrants are the beginning of that competitive advantage, that strategy of how you, you can begin to compete. And they did it beautifully. They eliminated star performers. Why? By having no star performer, they could run shows worldwide simultaneously. Having a star performer was not scalable. They eliminated animals. Why? Because there was the costs and fighting PETA and the risk associated to having animals in, in the upkeep was too much because the circus wouldn't be functioning and they'd still have to keep track of these animals. Aisle concession sales. One, it was, it, they felt it was tacky. It wasn't an experience. It wasn't a night out. And then lastly, made it more expensive. So it felt all of a sudden people were committed to it and it was worth it. They also increased um, the, the volume of the music. They added live performances, increased the excitement level. They reduced their cost. How did they reduce their cost? Instead of having to rent out the entire stadium, they just hold it in a parking lot. They put it right there in the parking lot. So ingenious things, when you start thinking along those kind of lines, start really making us think differently. And I'm a big proponent of looking at other industries for driving trends. The mortgage industry is notorious for looking only within itself. And I love to look outside of the industry. What's happening outside? What, what's, what's successful there? And how do I bring that to be successful here where I'm at? So with that, I want to leave you with some homework and then open this up to some questions. And the homework is, is pretty simple. Because I, 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 want, I want you guys to think about this as really some tangible things that you can take away. And the first thing, I want you to take an honest look at your business. And I want you to answer three questions. How have you decided to compete? If you find yourself that you're lowering prices and your concessions and things like that, and you're trying to be the lowest cost provider, are you trying to be the Walmart? And if that's the case, that's the case. That's how you've decided to compete. And you know what? Then I'd say own that and be the best at it. Find the best place that offers the best pricing and constantly beat your competition. And if you do it often enough, that's great. But don't get confused in trying to differentiate it and be the lowest. Now, if you can do both, that's pretty awesome. Not many people can do both. Now, so the next one is what makes you different? Sorry, it says them. It says what makes you different? And what is your reputation in the marketplace? What would others say about you? What it makes you different? And what would others say about you? And, this, and if you really are serious, because I know some people that my clients that I do this with, we go through and we ask realtors, survey them. What is your honest take on XYZ company? I have other people secret shop and say, hey, I've heard about this. Can you tell me a little bit more about this individual? And they get an honest look. And they don't do that because they want to retaliate. They don't do that. And they definitely don't take it personal. They do that because they want to get better. And so I'd ask you, how have you decided to compete? What makes you different? And what is your reputation in the marketplace? Second piece that I want you to do, I want you to define your top three competitors in your market space. Who are the top three people, or, or peop, maybe, it's, maybe it's three people you compete against, or three companies that you compete against? Or maybe it's one company and two individuals. Whoever it is, I want you to define your top three, and I want you to go through the same process. I want you to analyze objectively, okay, how have they decided to compete? What makes them different? And what is their reputation in the marketplace? Now, this is not easy because a lot of us go into our competition ready to to, to ready to poke holes in everything that they're doing. There's not, there's no value in that. The value is taking an honest look and saying, man, what makes these guys awesome? And really taking a look at it, being really curious about it and understanding it to the level as if almost as if you wanted to work with them. But to really understand it, stand in their shoes. Is it technology? Is it the way that they present? Is it their work ethic? What is it about them? that makes it so much better or what makes it about that they that, that allows them to compete. So now, F, as you go through those, I want you to think about that and then analyze those elements together and then come back next week and we'll take it to the next level. So um, what I'd like to do here is open this up to questions. And those of you, again, we the, the awkward webinar Reality sometimes is we open up uh, uh, things to questions and you've been multitasking. So I'm going to give you a minute to kind of come back and start thinking about what does this mean to you and how can you apply it to what's going on. So I'd like, again, 
asking what questions would you have. And as you have those, I'm going to keep keep a track of, of the hands that are being raised in there. Click that button, and we can unmute you. But uh, I'm going to go into sort of really what the the better loan officer's value proposition in terms of wh- how did we decide to compete? Again, if you have questions, please raise your hand. We looked at things like having our own verification or uh, verified stamp. That's We want this piece to be the, the known product. We wanted to have differentiate through a story. That's why you hear me talk about ethos and you hear me talk about Aristotle. Uh, all right, Rick Grant has got a question here. It says, in your experience, Renee, what have been the best differentiators for loan officers? Big question. In fact, Rick, I'm going to unmute you because uh, I think that's a fantastic question. Now, if you guys don't know Rick Grant, um, Rick Grant is, um, uh, in my opinion, a legend in this industry and somebody that has, uh, let's see, are you unmuted, Mick? Rick? You're awesome. All right. Well, great to, great to hear from you, man. So many, you've already said, so many loan officers out there. Um, what's a starting point? I mean, can we have like a, a group of differentiators that you have seen out there that have been effective? Are there, um, you know, what's going to ring true for the borrowers that these guys are trying to uh, capture before their competitors? That's a great, that's a great, great question. Here's how I've looked at it. Let's combine back the previous webinars that we've had. Everything that I'm trying to do in this Better 52 is about creating those competitive advantages for loan officers. The reality, and if you go back to even those four examples of those companies that uh, I gave, we, we talked about um, haagen Cadbury, The Body Shop, and um, Cirque du Soleil. What people don't realize, all four of those companies have something in common. What they have in common is none of them are companies out of the United States. So none of them have the same... Um, uh, way that they can advertise through TV and everything because people outside in Europe, European countries, don't watch as much TV. So they can't take the same marketing approaches as some of these other companies. And so they had to think very, very differently. Mortgage loan officers have to think differently too because you, you don't have the budgets as somebody else. So I, <clears throat> I look at this as saying, how can we get back to something simpler? How do we get back to something that is within a budget and something that is something that I can control? And so... I look at a couple different things. One is to understand my sales process. If I understand my sales process, I will be more efficient. I will be more efficient. I will get through. I will generate leads. I will track those leads. I will communicate with those leads. And I will move each one from each step more efficiently than the next person. And as we recall, I think it was anywhere from 81 to 92% of people will do business with either the first or second real estate agent or the first or second loan officer that they meet with. So if your process, you can beat your competition by just having a better process. If you can move them through your sequence of events faster, it'll be better. Secondly, I would say is through presentation. How well do you tell your story? Are people listening to your story? Do people buy into your story? Do you have a way of standing up in front of a room when everyone else is at the BNI uh, meeting and they're giving this, uh, well, here's what I do, here's how I do it, and uh, I'm very passionate, and you sound like that guy or that girl. Or you stand up there and you tell a story and people are moved by that story and they want to meet with you because they want to learn more about what it is that you're doing and the way you carry yourself, the brand, all of those different pieces are ways that you can definitely differentiate. I know many of my friends have gone through and, and, and um, they differentiate by understanding product. They understand uh, compliance and guidelines better than anybody else and they then put those guidelines together to close a higher percentage of deals than somebody else does. And guess what? They go back to their realtor and they take their presentation skills and they say, look, let me show you about five deals that weren't able to be done with another company and let me show you how we did those deals. When you work with us, we get your deals closed. And so they turn that into a value proposition by uh, increasing the conversion ratios of even realtors. So realtors say, wow, I make more money by working with you because you understand guidelines better than anybody else. Some people do it through marketing in terms of um, marketing execution. So you realtors right now are struggling with how they get to market. And I've said this uh, in the previous webinars that marketing and sales are different skill sets. What we're talking about here are marketing skills, or excuse me, sales skills, things that you can control. Marketing is a very different skill set. And I advise clients to write the check for marketing. There's great programs out there, top of mind, be in touch. All of, There's so many, uh, Vantage Production, there's so many good products out there that you can write the check and marketing will happen. 
So if, but now how does that translate into a value? Well, maybe they can do a co-branded experience for a realtor, but then again, they got to be able to tell that story. Can they be the one to communicate the story and the value proposition to the realtor for the realtor to say, you know what? Wow, that makes sense. You would definitely help me and I can see the ROI. So those are three ways that I strongly believe in because most people don't have the dollars to, to build an enormous brand. Um, I know one, um, one good friend of mine, uh, Joe Grenet, started the Downtown Resource Group here in Minneapolis uh, almost 11 years ago. And when he came to me, he said, I want to focus just on downtown condos and lofts. He wants to just focus. And I looked at him, I said, wow, you, you've got courage, man. He goes, yep, I'll say no to anything that's not a condo or loft. That was 10 years ago. He built a company, has eight real estate agents that competes for first place in downtown Minneapolis. He's competing in, or fighting for first place with another company that has 350 agents. He's got eight. Why? Because he focuses. If he, he doesn't have anybody, nobody on his team, nobody anywhere does anything outside of downtown condos and lofts. And it's powerful when people can get clear on, on that kind of thing. So, Rick, does that give um, at least some, some thoughts there? Absolutely. And if you don't know, if you don't know where you are, if you don't know where you stand, I mean, you're, you're going to go out there and you're going to compete. And it's like going into a sport and not knowing what team you're playing against. It wouldn't make any sense. And you, if you're not knowing who the star players are, and I always go back to that same question, is are you really a professional? Do you see yourself as a professional? Or are you somebody that just kind of figured out that this, this business is, you can still make a pretty good living, uh, not trying real hard. But I guarantee you, there are people that are making over a million dollars a year in this industry. Lots of them. And each one of them takes a good look at where they are, how they compete. They know their competition. They know how to present. And they know, and I guarantee you, they have a strong, replicatable sales process that they can use. And it's continuous. And so relationships, building relationships, absolutely one of the most powerful, sustainable, competitive advantages around. Is that, is there any other questions on that, Rick? Awesome. And if you got more, please, please chime back in. So if you guys don't know, Rick, Rick is a former editor of uh, Loan Originator magazine and, and uh, a big contributor to uh, MBA and, and Housing Wire and countless other things. It's just a, a gem of a person, too. If you, if you don't, uh, Rick, what's your website? Because I, I, I'm sorry. This is, I just, I'm such a fan of what you do. It's RGA. Uh, rickgrant.net or is it RGA I'm putting you on the spot Rick what is it I appreciate it Rick so um, again if you have questions please raise we've got just a, a few more minutes here um to have that discussion. So please raise your hand. I'm going to keep going on here. So again, how we decided was to think, have things like a story, like, like uh, the ethos verification. We wanted to have um, this on-time closing percentage was a big part of our strategy. We wanted to make sure that we stood out in terms of having something different than any other rating service had out there. Instead of just stars, we knew that loan officers could turn this tool into their batting average to then turn around and talk to uh, realtors to say, look, we close our loans on time, especially with the stresses that are coming out with TRID. All realtors are looking for, are you going to close this loan on time? Because if you close a loan on time, I, I get paid. And so we looked at um, all of those elements, and I'm going to try to fast forward here to probably one of the bigger differentiators, which we, we talked about last week, was your the pro sheet. And when you do become a member, you get your ethos verified stamp, you get your on-time closing percentage, you get control over your profile, so you can add all your social media pieces, you can add your apply for the loan, uh, button here, but then you get uh, this piece here, the pro sheet, where now talk about differentiation, and somebody else is handing out three business cards, and you're one of these business cards, but you can instead take this and you hand that out. That's a differentiation strategy, and that's a differentiation strategy in the moment of decision. If you've got the relationship with the realtor, if you've got the relationship with the referral partner, and now you've made it easy for them to refer you, now all of a sudden, you start seeing business go up. 
And what does it take to have that pro sheet? I mean, the pro sheet's simple. Become a member and get th- three verified reviews from realtors and three verified reviews from uh, loan officers and make sure your headshot's on there and you've unlocked it. And so that's something that it's not an additional cost. It's something that's there. So make sure you go in, uh, claim your profile, and if you like the pro sheet, upgrade to be a professional member and you get things like this. Thank you.